there is a problem with fire bricks, and by extension, everything that I've built with them. But more on my destroyed heat treat oven in a minute. I'm gonna go over what the problem is, what happened to render my oven completely useless, I will fix it, and go over how you can prevent this issue in the future in your own builds. First off, what's with fire bricks? Well, they come in light and heavy, these are light ones, but it isn't that simple, because there's several grades of each, we don't have time to go into it right now. But a mix of these kind of bricks are used to build all sorts of things. Foundry furnaces, pottery kilns, forges for blacksmiths, crematoriums. Any, anything that needs to get a couple thousand degrees a lot of the time is probably made using these things. And I built my foundry furnace out of them, uh, but also that heat treat oven, which I've used to heat treat metal, not a lot, firing pottery test tiles, you can melt stuff in it. Soon I want to do wax burnout for investment casting. Seriously, anything. Re seriously. If you can, build or buy one of these tiny ovens with a little controller. You can use it for so many things. It is just unbelievable how useful they are. Like, like imagine if you're single and you gotta make your own food. It's like a microwave and a toaster oven together, but it can go to 2300 degrees. It's, it's, at least that's all the hotter I've had mine up to. It's, it's crazy. Just build one, please. Problem number one, I built this oven from scratch. So it's a bit, it's, it's kind of rickety. Problem number two, uh, these, these bricks, they're not very tough. And I'm asking, especially the lid, the, the bricks for the, t the door on the top, I'm asking them to handle a lot of stress. And they're, they're doing a good job, admirable job, except for problem number three. Problem number three is one I've never heard talked about outside of like some pottery circles. And, and not just, not the, not the kilns you buy. I'm talking the gigantic ones you have to design and build in place, like the ones you gotta walk inside to get to your stuff. You know, they have these huge, huge doorways and they fire these things sometimes in well over 2000 degrees, 2300 degrees for like a week straight. So we're talking a lot of hours on these things. As an aside, I find people get hooked on like one craft you know, like they're only a, a blacksmith or they only do metal casting or something. You, you, you gotta get out of that habit. Potters, blacksmiths, metal casters, uh, glass blowers, a bunch of other people use things like a box or something that gets super hot to, to do their craft. Get together, compare notes. It might be enlightening, who knows? Just food for thought. Uh, but anyways, these giant kilns are usually reduction kilns and you don't want air leaking in, okay? You don't want any air getting in where you don't want it to get in. And you gotta be able to get the door open when you gotta get your stuff out of there. So you can't just seal it up. So what do they do? Well, they generally take these nice soft bricks and also the hard ones and cut them to perfectly fit inside the opening. No gaps. But the problem occurs after like a, couple, a few firings and at this point it's spent like a thousand hours over 2000 degrees. Uh, so this takes a while. Uh, but those bricks, they suddenly, they don't fit very good anymore. And you gotta start shimming them, you gotta like cut like little thin ones, you can slide them in the openings. They shrink, basically. They shrink ever so slightly. They also like smear clay over the thing, so it plugs all the gaps. And anyway, forget it. The shrinkage is the problem I'm having right now. I had heard about this problem from a documentary about, I think, English potter Phil Rogers, and I planned for it. So this, this oven that I built has a removable top. This is the door. See, it just, it just lifts up. There's no hinge or anything. And it's just eight bricks uh, held together with a band clamp, some, some angle here for the corners. When they shrink, they're just shrinking a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But you know, over time, it's enough to build up to be a problem. I figured as that happens, I could just keep it tight and the problem goes away, right? Well, it didn't. The lid just fell in here in the middle. You can see it. And it really didn't matter how tightened I made this thing. It tightened up nice, the middle still fell in. Okay, so look at this thing from up here. When the bricks go on, they kind of sit like this right? Only part of it is covering the opening. And in here is the, the hot box, not a hot box. No, that's wrong word, wrong terminology. So this side of the brick, you know, gets exposed to all the burning heat. And out here it stays relatively cool. I mean, don't touch it or anything, but it's not glowing white out here. So what that means is the inside here has shrunk a little bit, just a little bit, and out here hasn't. And this happens like all, all the way around. So if I tighten that that band clamp, it just tightens along the perimeter and this inside part is still all loosey-goosey. Okay, I can confirm this by flipping the bricks around. So the loose parts on the outside, the tight parts in the middle, and uh, re-tightening the clamp and see what happens. Okay, re-tighten this band. And let's see how it works. Should be able to just pick it up by the, by the clamp and then them not like collapse. <laughs> Hey, look at that. It's tight again. Earthquake test. They're not falling down. Bingo. Okay, so all I've done is kick the can down the road a little bit. This is all just gonna happen again. Uh, how do I prevent it? Well, the foundry furnace lid 
doesn't have this problem for a couple of reasons, which we'll get into later, but I'm too lazy to redesign this whole thing from scratch right now. So I'm going to reinforce the bricks. Reinforced concrete has long rebar poles to add tensile strength and support, so clearly I need to do that here, uh, but not with rebar. This is steel. Now we never get the inside of this thing quite up to steel melting temperature, definitely hot enough to weaken steel, but I'm not putting this inside. I'm gonna put this through the bricks. They don't have to hold all the way to this thing, they just have to have enough strength so that if the top were to start bending, this can kind of hold it in place. I am leaving the band clamp in place, I'm keeping it tight, and I'm only gonna lift the lid like when the thing is turned off anyway, or at least not that hot. So this, this should be good enough, fingers crossed. If not, we'll definitely know soon. So to get these rods through the bricks, I'm gonna have to bore a hole and I'm gonna use the rod to do it. But it, it needs a drill bit end, so to speak. So here's how you do that. Using like a grinder, a file or something, give it a chisel end. Then I like adjust it till it has a slight point in the middle. This is kind of like a drill bit end, you know. It's, it's a lot worse, but the brick is pretty soft. It, it should work out okay, fingers crossed. I'm gonna run it through the sides, like so. I mean, if I had a big drill press that I was sure was straight, I would use that. Since I don't, I'm gonna hope I can use the force or whatever and get it through straight with a normal handheld drill. Then cut the end off with an angle grinder and it just so happens this threaded rod was exactly twice the width of the lid. So I don't even need to get another threaded rod. Okay, the hole is a little tight here, you know, on account of it being drilled by this rod. Not a lot of extra space. Suppose I'll just thread that right in. That was surprisingly easy to do. Kinda shocked. I'm not gonna thread a nut on either end. I want them to have room for expansion. I also wanna be able to like remove them if they do get gross and like shove something else in there. I don't know, maybe I'll get tungsten in the future. But hopefully it's good enough for at least a few heat cycles. So what can you do in the future to prevent needing to do this on yourself? Cause like what I just did, let, let's be honest, it's not ideal, it's a bodge job. But if you're designing it from scratch, uh, take a look at other fire brick structures. The roof on many kilns aren't flat, they're like arched. You know, if those arches, if the bricks and the arch start to shrink, it's, it's just gonna lower the arch slightly and they're all gonna be tight again. It's brilliance of an arch, you know, and, and the amount the bricks shrink, it's very tiny, so you're not even gonna notice, but the, the structure will automatically fix itself. It's really cool. There's also like the furnace foundry lid, like this one. So with these ones, it's getting dust in my tea. With this thing, you might think like this metal part is what's holding it together, and it kind of does, and it's got this flange holding them up. But really, the bricks on the inside here, they're shaped like a wedge. So if any of them, and they're like held up on the edges here, so if any of them were to tip, they would tip forward towards each other. And because the top is wedged, I know there's a hole in it, but because the top is wedged, when they move forward, they push together kind of like a Roman arch. Not as well, kind of a screwy version of that, but it's a similar idea. So this, although there's big cracks in it, from the lid, you know, heat cycling and shrinking a little bit, it's, uh, it's still holding together. Also, I've been patching it with Satanite, that helps. You know, like, there's a reason those Roman buildings have been standing up so long, and it's not the aliens who didn't build them. It's because the design is just smart. Romans were pretty smart when it came to building stuff. So, like, if that band clamp, like, squeezed in on all the edges, and not just the corners, it would probably be similar to this. But they don't, because I, I didn't engineer it very well, to be honest. Another method you can do, just make the lid, like, seal it all up. Put the door on, on the front. Like a lot of the ovens you buy, the fronts open up. It's never a problem. They also tend to be a little smaller. Uh, one thing you can do, you can actually get these bricks in larger pieces. You can get a full like foot and a half by foot and a half square of it. They just cut it this shape because it sells better. You know, they can move a lot of them. But if you call them up on the phone, you can get a single piece, as big as you want. Why didn't I just do that? Huh. Whatever. It's fixed. Ready to burn out some PLA or whatever. I'm making this stuff up as I go, okay? Where were you, like, two years ago when I built this thing? With that brilliant idea, huh? For the record, I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling at my reflection in the lens. That jerk. 